Welcome guys. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about compatibility. Can it be worked on? Tune in to find out. See you now. Oh, hi guys. Welcome to Earth Baby. My name is Marcy. Hello, 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 my good people. I'm Kamo. Welcome to Worth Living. Mm. So, uh, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm still standing. You're still standing. By God's grace. By God's grace. No, yeah, that's fine. So, that's today we have a topic mm-hmm. that we want to uh, talk a bit on. Yeah. Um, interesting as well. Interesting as well. I mean, I like saying our topics are interesting. Yeah. I'm sure they are. <laughs> uh, or could it be they're not? But I think they are, right? Yeah. Our people are here. Mm. So, yeah, it's good to be back, guys. So, today we're going to talk about compatibility. Compatibility. Like we usually say, yeah. we like to talk about issues that affect us and people around us. And yeah. most of you know, we are working on our eighth year now. We've been Yay. married for the past seven years. Yes. And so, obviously, as lovely as marriage can be, as lovely as a relationship can be, there's always other things or stumbling blocks yeah we you know, all other have things that we all have we all challenges, challenges. Yeah. and we believe that for the past seven years of being in marriage there's some things that we we learned and mm. and things that we need to grow on exactly yeah so but, today's topic but how do you think our, con- our compatibility is do you think we're compatible yes okay and and i think it depends on the real definition of compatibility yeah because with us the, the definition of compatibility yeah. is not really the common things mm. that we have, but okay. in actual fact is how we resolve, right, the differences. So I want to expose you a bit, right? <laughs> Why? Okay, Do you fine. know what I'm going to say? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, hit it. So I want to expose my wife a little bit, right? Okay. And if she's honest. By the way, guys, don't worry about... My thing. <laughs> if you look clearly, you can see the the <laughs> the ring stamp. <laughs> the ring stamp is there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't worry about it. I'm I'm actually thinking of getting a. Can I get a a tattoo on here? A tattoo. Yes. Written your name. We'll talk about it off. Okay. Anyway, I wanted to expose <laughs> you. So, um, one of the things when I met. My then girlfriend, this one, hmm. you see, right? Yeah. Her thing was, she's always wanted to get married to a white guy. Okay. That's expose, right? Okay, no, that's fine. Is it true? No, it's true. Okay. And I'll tell you why. And no, 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 it's fine. Okay. I I know why you wanted to. Okay. Right. Hmm. And I guess you know it relates very well to the topic we're talking about today. Hmm. So. You had a certain um, outlook Mm. or a certain way that you look at perception, Mm. how you looked uh, at um, men of a certain color over men of a certain color because of what you've had, obviously, or what you you saw in the past. The media. But then, as as you are saying, as you are saying, you have to learn to, you know, work out the differences. Differences. You can you can always have the same 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 things. You can't have everything you want. You can have everything you want. But then I wanna say you can always okay, most people that I I had um met the two you would be like we like um same things. Mm. But the topic for today is can it be worked on? Because mm. a lot of people have surrendered. Uh, when it comes to the topic of compatibility. Mm. And it's it's one common, common, common issue these days mm. because compatibility feeds into how you relate, how you do things together, mm. how you communicate. It's actually our our definition of compatibility though, how you resolve your differences. Mm. Because I know out there that definition of com- com- compatibility it's about the same things that they do. Mm. Somebody will feel like because we do things together, then we are compatible. Mm. Mm. And and you find that you know, you know, just on that point, mm. uh, because people, as time goes on, yeah. tend to find out other things they yeah. didn't know at the beginning, mm. right? Mm. Now they start looking at those things mm. more than the things that they are common 
between the two between of them, two right? Of them. Priorities so change. Priorities change now. Mm. I used to wear sneakers. Mm. Uh, now I feel like sneakers are for younger people. Mm. Mm. Then you start feeling like uh, I like that guy with the sneakers. Mm. I know I'm giving um, such a, a simple, simple, a simple example. example, but but priorities do change. Mm. But um, when they change, I think a point, a good point that you raised earlier was, do you communicate um, mm. uh, where the person you want to now become yeah. compared to the person you were before? Mm. So, so um, I know I digress a bit, but I know the point is. Um, to say we we need to communicate um, when we change and mm. yes uh, challenges are different yeah. and the, the, you know the answer to the question you're asking can it be worked on yes we mm. can work out mm. uh, we can always work out something there's always a chance yeah. I believe we believe yeah. there's always a chance you know to to fix things mm. but you get that sometimes uh, problems become bigger Hmm. Because we do not solve them yeah. early enough. Hmm. We, we, we think it's not a big deal. We, we continue and hope that it will change. Hmm. And then it doesn't. Hmm. At the time, uh, the, the other one wants to change things. The other one is fed up already. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, take, for example, the issue of goals at the beginning of your marriage or at the beginning of your relationship you communicate a lot of aspirations and a lot of um, expectations mm. that you have concerning your relationship concerning your marriage and I think the number one thing which I will also give to the men and to the women both of them because we're all different yeah. is not to forget the original um, agreement and the expectations and the vision that you both drew mm. so that by the time you change your priorities you are able to fill in your partner mm. so that they know mm. for instance a man can say I'm going to marry you I'm going to build you a house I'm going to do oh, so and so I know I'm just giving examples that I'm going to buy you a train <laughs> going to buy you yeah. know it, it, it it happens. I would I would take you to my to my family. Don't worry. Say for instance, you're living with extended family. You're living with your husband. You're living with the siblings and everybody. And then the husband says at the beginning of the marriage, you know, don't worry. Um, it's just a matter of time. Time, and then we'll be out, out of here. Yeah. We're gonna move out, and mm. then time passes. At seven years and ten years down the line, you still. When it's holidays, you're still finding yourself with the siblings of your husband, and you are all gathered there with the children and everything, and then. You as a lady, for example, because we are the ones that um, leave our houses and join our spouses to their families. Mm. And then your husband is beginning to see things differently, right? Priorities have changed. Oh, he has decided, oh, there's no need for me to build a house in the village because we are always in town. Mm. But the original agreement with your spouse was that it's just a matter of time and you'll be out of here. Mm. And then you have that conclusion by yourself and then you don't get to communicate it to your spouse. Mm. And, 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 and communication is, 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 you know, always plays a key yeah. uh, role, you know, mm. in solving a lot of problems really. Mm. Because mm. You, you find that sometimes we're actually angry because someone didn't tell you. Yeah. And now, it's gonna bring up other issues that we're, we're not going to come out initially. Mm. Mm. So, you know, I know we always talk about communication yeah. and we're not saying we're the best on it, yeah. but you know, it's important. We feel it's important. We know it's important. I'm sure you guys also mm. agree that mm. communication is important. Yeah. And I think uh, one of the topics we need to talk about is to delve um, a deeper into communication because I know you always mention it and yeah. someone is wondering, I'm communicating. Mm. Could be that you're communicating but you're not giving the person the right communication that they understand. Mm. But anyway, again, yeah. uh, going back, um, you spoke of a vision, right? Mm. Yeah. When people get into a relationship, um, they sort of a, a contract they agree, mm. either verbally or you know, in terms of hope or what, yeah. you, what you think you are seeing, right? Mm, mm. And that needs to be maintained mm. consistently throughout yeah. the time that you are yeah. together, mm. right? And there has to be uh, a, 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 a symbol that, or a sign that, mm. you know, you are building on it. Yeah. You, you are going somewhere, you, you're trying to, 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 to make it better. 
and actually try trying to get to that goal. I think what is important now here is to understand that if you both liked cycling at the beginning, and if you both liked um, a certain type of music together, and as time went on, five years down the line, because of changes around, because of influences from where you are working, influences from new people that you are meeting, things now are changing. What you're really emphasizing on is, yes, it can be worked on. You no longer like this type of music. You like this type of music. Call your partner and communicate. And it is okay for your partner to appreciate the differences. As but what if, what if your partner feels that's not who you were? You're communicating. Hmm. But what if they feel like that's not who you were? And I, I like the previous you. Hey, uh, the, you know, the, the person that was before, how, how do we resolve that? Accept the differences. Accept the, the evolution. Oh, it's about an evolution. It's about understanding that we do change. We do change. And Priorities understand that you change. can also change. And understanding that you can also change. But now, the issue is not you have changed. The issue is how do we now solve this? So let's, let's, let's take a practical example, right? Yeah. yeah. We used to listen to gospel, yeah. traditional gospel. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just do a, you know, a little, you know, twist to it. Twist to it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, when we're in the car, mm. now I want to listen to contemporary. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So, how do you, how do you, I mean, the, the thing the thing with music is it's it's a language, right? Yeah, it's yeah. a language. And when when now I've ch I changed the way I or the kind of music I listen to. Mm -hmm. We were in a car together. Yeah, you used to the traditional. I want the contemporary gospel. How do we solve it? Do we go traditional track next contemporary next traditional? How, how do we solve it? In a situation like that, it goes back to communicating. If somebody feels connected to God by listening to contemporary music, and the other one feels connected to God by listening to traditional music, and they're both in the car, it's an issue of compromising. Oh. Compromising. Yes. Compromising is one of the ways of trying to deal with compatibility. Somebody has changed. Is the change for better? Or is the change for worse? Compromise comes in if the change is for the better. I mean, mm -hmm. your partner has changed from listening to traditional music to contemporary gospel music, right? Mm -hmm. You both value God and you both loved to listen to gospel music. But now the difference is your partner is preferring a different type of a genre. Now that's what I'm saying, the compromise becomes easily. Somebody has not really driven away from God mm. that prefers this type of music. Then, and it gets worse, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Um, we used to listen to the same music gospel. Yeah. Now I'm into R&B. Yeah. I'm just speaking to the point that yeah. you said, yeah. you know, you're still saving God together. Mm. Mm. But sometimes the changes we must appreciate, they, they, they are quite drastic, mm. right? Mm. You become uncomfortable. I start, yeah. I start uh, now drinking yeah. whiskey because mm. I found new friends. Mm. Um, how do we, do we solve that? Because um, I think, you know, most of the time when you talk about compromise, yeah. It always comes out as if the other one should bend. The other one should bend, mm. and no matter what, you know, it's mm. like I think compromise doesn't always mean the other person has to bend. It yeah. could be, it could be uh, acceptance. You just, you just accept that I yeah. do that, mm. but then we we have to have some kind of agreement to say, don't do this extreme end. Mm. At least do up to here. Mm. You know, trying to show that you do. You do accept that this thing has hurt the other person. It yeah. could hurt the other person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that you move, you know, in a little bit better 
mm. path together. Mm. Which, which takes us to the point of, we, fe we first said number one, um, in terms of working out your compatibilities, communicate the mm. changed priorities, communicate mm. the changed visions and the changed um, expectations. Yeah. And number two, we are saying, um, accept the differences. Mm. But there are those differences that you cannot be able to accept. And how do you accept the differences? By compromising. But then you're saying compromising doesn't mean that you should always um, bend. And it goes back to you compromise and then you communicate. Understanding that these are two different people that entered a relationship and growth doesn't stop. Being in marriage doesn't mean that now you've gotten, you've gotten it all under control. It doesn't mean that now you know everything. You are two separate people that are, that are growing separately financially, separately spiritually, separately physically. And it is important at the beginning of a relationship that we shouldn't be naive to say, this is how it's going to be all throughout. Mm -hmm. But there are some certain things that, of course, should stand the way they are. Yeah, things that we can't compromise on. Things that you can compromise on. And when it comes to on. issues of... Uh, morality, spirituality, mm. 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 Um, things like that, you know, because we believe in God, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I can now say I, I don't believe in God anymore. I mean, mm. it's, a, it's a big mm. thing for, mm. for that relationship mm. because it has mm. a lot of implications to mm. it, right? Mm. So certain things really, if you, you can't compromise on them or, or mm. should we say we shouldn't be compromising on. Mm. Mm. And, you know, and I know we, we're not giving rules, right? Yeah. To say you shouldn't be compromising on, but mm. um, you should understand that when you make change when you make changes on issues like that, it's yeah. it it hurts the other person. Mm. Right? Yeah. Even though they was they would compromise, it mm. hurts them. And the relationship can never be the same again. That's true. And I think the the main issue of hurt stems out from the fact that we move on leaving unresolved issues in the past. Mm. So if you really, really want to work out your compatibility to go back to the way you are, where you were actually, you need not to leave out some unresolved issues in the past. So you need to go back to them and solve them. Go back to the issues and solve them. Because most of the time, if somebody had you in the past and you never addressed it and you moved on, or he moved on as if nothing happened, that communionship and that friendship won't exist anymore. Because at the back of my mind, I'm thinking, how, how do you move on after speaking to me that way? How do you move on after taking such a decision? So the fact that we leave unresolved issues in the past kills the compatibility that people would have in a relationship or in marriage. It's important that whatever that happens, at that time be addressed at that time unless if it's all heated up and all that but don't let it go further without mm. addressing it because mm. if you let it go further the other issue is going to stem up and then you leave it and then the other one comes and then you leave it and then at the end of the day you look at him and so you see so many issues yeah. so many issues mm. like we are not compatible mm. well, while the fact is you didn't address a lot of things mm. because they seemed small then yeah. And so, so I think that's actually another point. Try to solve it as early as possible. As early as possible. When you see the early signs, try to sort it out. Yes. You know, so that you you prevent other problems mm. in the future, mm. uh, or you prevent bigger things in the future. Yeah. So we should appreciate, and I don't I don't like talking about this. We should mm. appreciate that um, one of the ways that you know when you are sure. But you're mm. not compatible. Mm. Uh, you've really tried everything you can. Mm. You know, as much as you know, we preach against divorce. Yeah, that's one way, especially where you know, I, I you know, I'm a, I'm a, you know, you know, hard believer in <laughs> if there's violence. Yeah, if there's yeah. violence and mm. separation doesn't mm. solve it. Mm. 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 It's best to part ways because mm. I, I don't see why a person that loves you yeah. should hurt you, especially mm. physically, because mm. it can end up into fatalities. Mm. Um, 
you know, families that looked perfect and what do we preach to the society, what do we mm. preach to the younger mm. ones. Mm. So, you know, sometimes you, it's, you've tried everything. Yeah. You've tried everything. Yeah. And, you know, uh, possibly there's a lot of reasons why you wouldn't want to take the, 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 the separation route mm. because you've got kids, you've got things that, you know, you feel like they'll be affected mm. even worse. Yeah. But sometimes uh, separation is the best option yeah. so that you can, you know, go back to God and say, God, guide me this time yeah. if it was uh, mm. my plan. The first mm. time, please mm. guide me this time. Mm. So it's important, and you know, it also brings me to the fact that, you know, you know, when you do a lot of things together, yeah, it helps you to appreciate first your similarities, other yeah. things that you didn't know you have in common, mm. and two. Are things that you know are not the same between the two of you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, the and differences. the differences. So when you pray together or, or do a lot of other things together, mm -hmm. but I actually want to, to talk about prayer. When you pray yeah. together, what happens is you you become vulnerable to the third person who is God mm -hmm. in your relationship, mm -hmm. and He helps you to. Um, realize that there's something bigger to mm. bigger than what you you think is the biggest thing in your mm. life you understand mm. Mm. he he really the holy spirit really helps you guides you mm. in in a lot of things that you know seem impossible yeah yeah in flesh mm. yeah. and when you're saying that baby you're just reminding me that sometimes with the issue of compatibility we look at tiny little things of course, these tiny little things are the things that matter most of the time. Mm. But we forget to look at the bigger picture when we're going through that pressure and feeling like we're, in, we're not compatible. Mm. It's important to breathe and just analyze your relationship, analyze your marriage and say, but if I say my husband, we don't, we cannot sit down and chat and love and we cannot go for soccer together we cannot cook together like the way we used to. We cannot do some drives the way we used to. Check. Sometimes you will count them and they'll just be four before you can take the decision of saying you're exiting. Because most of the time we frustrate ourselves by looking at more at the, the what do you call that? The things the, the that similarities, the similarities, yeah. The similarities, not, not looking at other things. Because we all have um what do you call it what matters to me doesn't matter to you with the same percentage so uh, sometimes it will just be an issue of just pleasing you at the beginning right so uh, but if you're already in marriage and and your spouse was just <laughs> pretending at the beginning and then you got married i think i'm getting to the point where i was talking about an extrovert and introvert mm. sometimes I would be afraid, or I would have my own perception about um, being an introvert. Oh, my own fears. And you're an extrovert. You're not afraid of anything. You go, you're an outgoing person. You do things, you drink, you do all that. And probably I would have um, been raised from a different family who sees life differently. And it's important that we accept our differences and call each other into our world. Mm. And perhaps you will see things differently. Not just pushing Certainly. them away. Yeah. If, if I feel like I want to cook with you and you don't want to cook with me, you're from a, a, a traditional life when men don't cook. They just except sit down. <laughs> except for Asia. <laughs> men just sit down yeah. and then they're just being given food. Um, and a young wife who prefers to cook with my husband. And if it's what I value. And you should learn that. Yeah, I should invite you into mm. my world, mm. not just to say he used to cook with me and I, uh, probably he used to come and cook with you because he was just doing it just to please you. Mm.
Of course, at the beginning, we will try all those communicating, calling them into those communicating, calling them into your world, going for counseling, going for counseling yeah. you know, appreciating each other's differences yeah. and compromising where it's compromisable, not mm. in the issue where there's abuse and all that, but they, yeah. there's, a, there's a time where you cannot compromise at all. Yeah. You know, I, like you said, compromise doesn't mean somebody has to to be, to bend. Mm. To agree Compro- to the whole Compromising yeah. is actually an agreement between the two people, not one person. Mm. Because if something persists, if something persists, you talk about it and it still persists, you talk about it and it still persists, you cannot compromise anymore. Mm. You can't. That means the other party had left the compromising to you. Mm. If I complain and it about, feels one-sided. It feels one-sided, but actually it's not one-sided. Two ty- two so compromising is, is meeting halfway. Compromising it's is not meeting hundred percent no. at zero. No. No. Which okay. is which is which is uh, what a lot of people or a lot of people think it is. Mm. That when you say you compromise or you bend, you're it's, letting it's, go. You're letting, you're letting it go. Of everything. No, when you say compromise. Mm. We mean when we agree together that I'm going to compromise. My compromising should provoke you to compromise. Mm. Oh, powerful. As well. Mm. Submission is deeper than we think, eh? Yes. My compromise should be your compromise. Yes. Ah. Great stuff. Great stuff. Great stuff. So yeah. compatibility can, can really be, be worked on. Mm. Thank you so much, guys. We'll catch uh, up the other side. All right. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe. Share. Share.